Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. I want to give a little short class or a repeat of a class that we did about a year ago. Um, it was out of the Third Testament of the Bible, chapter 39. But I wanted to repost the class or re-edit the class and put it back up with the title called Who Are the 144,000? Um, a lot of these guys are starting to wake up, starting to find out who they are. We're starting to find out who they are. Um, a lot of people are going through the uh, canonized books of the Bible looking for as much information as they possibly can. But, you know, we find out that they're the bride, we find out that they're the elect, we find out that they're chosen, and then the whole chapter of Matthew chapter 10 is written all about those guys, but there's not a lot of information in the Canaanized books about the, um, about the 144,000. Not a lot in the apocryphal books either, or even the Dead Sea Scrolls, but, you know, there's a lot of people filling in the blanks, and there's coming up uh, some problems. There's people who are filling in the blanks, um, basically, I, I, I don't want to say they're just making stuff up, but that's what it seems like because they don't really have any scripture to go on. But we're going to tell you who the 144,000 are, but we're going to use scripture. It's like, wait a minute, coach, you just said that, you know, they exhausted the scripture and, you know, we shouldn't be making up stuff. So how are you going to tell us who they are without making up stuff or going back to the old 66 books? We're going to do so with the Third Testament of the Bible. Now, I know some of you guys haven't heard of the Third Testament of the Bible. And that's one of the things we want to do is promote the Third Testament of the Bible. You've heard that we've been waiting for spirit and truth. Well, here it is, guys. And I uh, hope to give you a link to a free PDF version that you can download to your computer, maybe even print it out. Or even an audio book that you can listen to it online for free. Hopefully, give you those links in the description or in the comments or somewhere. If I forget, just give me a reminder. But we want to talk about what the Third Testament of the Bible says about the 144,000. Who are the 144,000? Um, and chapter 39 of the Third Testament of the Bible tells us all about, you know, who, who are the, uh, the, the, the chosen, who are the elect. All right. So sit back with us for, you know, a little less than an hour. It's going to take. Um, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. So sit back and enjoy the class. Um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for any future classes that we'll put out and leave comments. Guys, you're doing good deeds when you leave comments. Some of the people haven't heard of the Third Testament of the Bible and they may be looking for your comment for secondary confirmation that this is actually a legitimate document. So by leaving your comment and giving the father some credit for his word may do you some good i'm sure it will all right guys we're gonna jump right into it but we're gonna start here in verse 40 let's keep it going all right to extend my work in this third era okay extension means to spread who's gonna do the carrying who's gonna who's gonna carry the loaf now i have come to choose from among the great masses, meaning the multitude, all of the people who are Israel, uh, material or um, uh, spiritual Israel, um, uh, blood or uh, grafted Israel. He's talking about the great masses. I've come to choose 144,000 spirits. Okay. Not necessarily people. Notice he didn't say people. He says spirits. Mark them by the kiss of divine light. Okay, now to understand what the divine light is, um, you, it is kind of what we're all expecting here. We're all expecting the divine light, but what he's saying is he marked these uh, spirits um, with the kiss of the divine night light, not a kiss of betrayal, nor the sign of a pack that will put your spirit in danger. <clears throat> um. Like, you know, if you all looked alike or if you were all the same, you know, if it, if it were all African-American males, you know, and only African-American males, I'm sorry to say, you know, there would be no African-American males, you know. And so he's saying that he didn't he didn't betray you and he didn't put a mark on you. He says, my mark is a sign that the Holy Spirit deposits on those it has chosen to carry out the great mission in this the third era okay so uh my mark is a sign that the holy spirit deposits on those it has chosen to carry out a great mission in this the third era so we're back to this mission remember this mission 
um guys the mission is bringing some people through the tribulation the tribulation is not really survivable you got to understand what's going on here people is they want the planet they they're talking about the the wealthiest people the 13 families that run this world they want the whole planet and they only know one way of getting rid of you and that's to you know destroy you with with war don't don't you remember that these guys you know they fund both sides of the war you know and they have the underground bunkers and tunnels and stuff you know with all these walmart trucks going in and out do you know what i mean come on let's put two and two together here this mission that he's talking about this 144 is is to help bring some of us through this these are going to be the guys that he what did what put the divine light in this light is going to be what's going to shine for the rest of us to see to follow through these seven years of tribulation so on the other side we you know we can there, there will be survivors and we praying and working and reading and studying and meditating that the that you know we are in that number the chosen few these the the you know you know not the ones that you know um get sucked off the planet because we know where they going they're going in a dirt hole they're going in the grave the eagles are going to eat them you know what i mean the rest of us want to inherit the earth and this is what he's talking about 144,000 people that's going to allow us to inherit the earth and it's not just you know uh, uh historical israel it's all of israel verse 41 says he who bears this sign is not safe from dangers okay talking about the 144,000 you know in other words we was tripping up we was wondering and, and it probably was all was about the 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 masses at the whole time is just that I knew this 144,000 uh, part was coming and I was probably mixing it up a little bit but we know who we're talking about now because he's ringing it out all over the page it says he who bears this sign is not safe from dangers but let me tell you man no they ain't safe from dangers in fact they are in harm's way more often than the rest of us because why they are the gods. How you want to have a god in front of you that ain't never been... Like if we was running through the jungle, this dog is scared of snakes. Or he don't know the path to take. You know what I'm saying? You want a god that's know all the dangers. You know, you want a god that got plenty of battle scars all over him. You know what I'm saying? Snake bikes and all kinds of crap. How did you survive that one? Well, I chopped down a leaf. You know what I'm saying? You want somebody that's been there. On the contrary, my friend, he says, He who is tried. Talking about the 144,000. He who is tried and tempted. He is tried and tempted more than any. Talking about the 144,000. This is what get on my nerves when they talk about these guys on the internet and stuff. They be talking about how they pure and holy. And they they virgin, so they ain't never had to experience nothing in life. It was like, man, you crazy? So this is going to be your guide now? You know what I'm saying? Some little dude, he, he, he ain't never been around the block not once. You know what I mean? And he going to take me around there? All right, I'm, I move over, dude. You know, I'll tell you about the guy here now. Ain't gonna be all that. Y'all gonna have to hit me in the head, cause you know what I'm saying. I ain't let nobody who ain't never been nowhere guide me. I'm sorry. He, he, he gonna be better than that. He gonna know where he going. Oh, he ain't guiding. We just gonna all be lost. Remember, each one of the twelve chosen by me in the second time. Okay, now we're talking about the apostles, right? We're talking about John. We're talking about uh, who else was it there? Simon and Judas and uh, you know all of them guys there. I think it was one named Levi. Can't name them all. Um, and you can confirm what I tell you. Okay. So it says, remember each one of the 12 and you can confirm what I tell you. So what he's saying, those were an example. Remember how, uh, who was it? One of them was the tax collector. You know, these weren't the good, you know, the best guys, you know. Uh, one of them was laid out naked in a boat. When I'm really laid out naked in a boat with people fishing for, that's that's kind of weird by itself. But you know, these were regular old people who, like I said, had been tried more than than most, more than any. He said tried more than any, and I, I I amen to that loud and clear, real loud. They have moments of doubt. Yep, show sure enough. They show sure enough do. You know what I'm saying? Doubt more than anybody because I'm gonna tell you where a lot of the doubt comes from is because they run when they run in down here to our churches and start talking to us. You know, we're hearing a message that's unfamiliar and we start casting doubt on them to the point we'll call them demonic and say that they are, you know, of a different religion. And you know what I'm saying? And then when they go home, they ain't got nobody to to uh, talk to because why? There ain't no congregation. Ain't no, you know. Jehovah Witness the group that they can go back to. No, we talking about the real 144, the ones that's chosen by him, not chosen by some other folk. You know what I'm saying? I go down to the Jehovah Witness and say, I'm 144,000. They're going to look at me like, uh, wait a minute, you ain't been through the proper, you know what I'm saying? You can say whatever you want to say. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and of uh, confusion, there was anyone who betrayed me 
to my executioners with a kiss. He says, they had moments of doubt, of weakness, and of confusion. There was even one who betrayed me to my executioners with a kiss. Meaning, these are still his spirits. But you got to understand the Judas spirit before we start, you know, bashing on Judas. Because, you know, if it hadn't been Judas, it would have been somebody else. And he, what did the scripture say? There's nobody who has put forth a greater repentance on the entire planet in all of humanity than Judas. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the repentance prayer is forgiven. Uh, verse 42 says, How much the chosen of this time shall have to pray and keep vigil to not fall into temptation? Okay. Now, this is telling, the, this is a message to the 144 saying, you know, this is what you got to do. You got to pray and keep vigil. Okay, not to fall into temptation because the temptation is so great. Now, what does he say? That the that the tribulation is going to become so great that even his elect shall shall be tricked. So even the bona fide 144, not you know us regular folk. I'm talking about the bona fide 144, the Lord's 144. You know what I'm saying? We just the friends of the 144, but the serious 144. He say you know, um, uh, uh they even they're going to be tricked as it is going to be so bad. You know what I'm saying? So. He says here, you know, that they have to, you know, keep vigil and not fall into temptation. Even so, I tell you truly that among the 144,000, there shall be traitors. Okay. So out of all of these groups, the, the Judas spirit is going to be back is amongst them. And so there's going to be some of these groups. So, how, how, so why is he telling you this? Well, because these guys are going to have powers too. They're going to be able to, you know, do the same stuff. There's nothing magical, guys. It's not magical about these powers or nothing supernatural about these so-called powers. You know what I'm saying? It's all it's stuff that we've already always been able to do. We just didn't know how to do it. You know what I mean? And so these the, the 144,000 is telling you here that a certain side of them is going to be wicked. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be like Judas. You know what I'm saying? Carrying the money bags. And, you know, looking for opportunity to steal out of it and looking for the opportunity to sell out on on the rest of the, the groups there. And then um, and, and, and such. So he said, look at the 12 disciples here. And so you can see a picture that is going to be various groups. It's going to be different. He says <clears throat> the mark means a calling. OK, no. So when you're looking for these hundred forty four thousand and you're not going to find them. You, I don't get where you look. You're not going to find them. Only they know and only the Lord knows. So if you're looking within to find one, well, this is what you're looking for. This mark is a calling. You know you got a calling in your life. You know you, you know you got a mission. You know what I'm saying? You know you got a responsibility before God. You may not know what it is, but you know it's something different. You know it's something there. You know you ain't like the regular folk. The 144 are not like regular folk. They're not like us. You know what I'm saying? They are quite different. Just think of them. There's only 144,000 out of 7.6 billion. You know, and even some of them, you know, you know what I'm saying? It is not a guarantee against temptation or illnesses. No, they get sick. I'm telling you, man. These folks get sick. Why? How you gonna how you gonna have somebody leading you that ain't even been sick? Y'all all y'all sick. You got diabetes, you got high blood pressure, you got um um, you know all the little e diseases of Egypt. How you gonna have some little you know fairy tale God dude come up here and he don't he don't he don't know nothing about you know he ain't never had an ache of plane in his life. He's showing up like a superhero, you know what I'm saying? And here you is hobbling along, barely making it, and here come the God dude standing like dun da da da. No man, he gets sick too. He gets sick more than any of you. You know what I'm saying? We gotta understand where sickness comes from. It's a it's a curse. It's a it's a it's a result of our wickedness. You know what I'm saying? And you got to understand that the Lord's people, these these results result on us a whole lot more than everybody else because, you know, he he you is is it's a chastisement to keep us in line. It's kind of like that rod, if you know what I mean. He says, "If it were if if they were like this, what merit would there be in my chosen?" Meaning what good, you know, if they all fairy tale dudes that ain't never did nothing wrong, what good are they? He says, what effect would it be for your spirit to remain faithful to my word? Verse 44. I speak to you in this way because there are many hearts among this multitude that will wish to form part of those who have been marked. Meaning there are a lot of people who want to be 144,000. I know I do. I want to be 144,000. He says, but I have seen that rather than 
the yearning to serve humanity with gifts that mark the mark the bestows mark bestows for a minute back up a little bit i guess i didn't touch on that other one enough the reason why we we all want to be 144,000 is because we don't know about the other spirits there's a lot of different spirits that are coming back including you know the 12 apostle spirits the um the all of the people who were there you know waving the palm branches you know you know screaming hosanna those people are coming back um mary magdalene spirit are coming back and it's not just one person there's not just going to be one mary magdalene walking around there's going to be maybe 144,000 mary magdalene's walking around and so you have that and we have that spirit in us and we know that we're somebody but nobody's telling us about these other spirits the only one we're hearing about is the early birds the first fruits and you know we like hey i must be one of them because you know ain't nobody else now there are other people we just got to you know keep reading the book they're all in the book and so we'll all figure out where our rose is and then and then we go, you know, I'm, you know, I may be the, the doubting Thomas spirit. That's why I'm searching in the word because you have to prove it to me. You know what I'm saying? You want, you, I'm, I need to see my eyeballs. I need to touch it and I need to see it. And you know what I'm saying? If you can't pull it out in the scripture, you know what I'm saying? You forget about it. You know what I'm saying? You can keep talking, you can talk to some words. And so I may be the doubting Thomas spirit. And if so, you know, there's a bunch of more people like me in the world. And when we all going to want to touch, we all going to want to do, you know what I'm saying? He said, but I have seen rather than the yearning to serve humanity with uh, gifts that the mark bestows. OK, so he says that a lot of people want to be the one of 44. But instead of doing what the 144 do, watch this. It is the desire to feel secure or vanity that moves them to ask me to call them. So it's, it's not that they want to do the do the work of the 144 don't nobody really want to be 144 i promise you you do not want that butt whooping you know what i'm saying i'm trying not to curse you don't want that one you know what i'm saying <clears throat> what it is you have the desire to feel secure you know there's a bunch of people talking about the rapture and there's a bunch of confused people saying that the 144 are only gonna be the only ones raptured blah 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 and so you're like uh -uh, I'm, I'm i'm one of so you're like i'm one of these guys and so what ends up happening is you end up with groups like in groups like uh, Jehovah Witnesses and or blood over intent or somebody who's saying, hey, you could be one of us. You know, what I'm saying, no, you know, you know um, like I said, there's a lot of different spirits. And, you know, you just have to find the one that you are that best suits you. If you believe you are the one of 44, you should stay on that path. But you, you got to understand what that path is here. And it ain't, you know, like you say, vanity. You know, it ain't vanity. It's nothing to be proud about. It's, it, I'm trying. I'm promising you, it's a butt whooping. It's a butt whooping. I'm serious. And as soon as you say I'm 144, you're going to get a taste of it. It's going to come and you're going to see what we're talking about. And, and you're going to, when you start feeling that heat, you're going to run back over there with the rest of the folk. Well, then when you get back over there, don't throw rocks back at the, the, the 144. Just remember that they were chosen from birth to do this. You know, they ain't, they ain't just made nothing up. They ain't growing chosen some group. You know what I'm saying? These are a different breed of folk. They're different. He says, I will test these petty ones. See, you see, I read ahead, right? As soon as you say I'm 144, he said, I'm going to test you. You know, so that's what people are feeling now. He says, and they will be convinced that there is truth in my words. Okay. Um, so you can get a little bit of taste of it. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? Welcome to my world kind of thing. 45 says, the mark is an invisible sign by which those who bear it with love respect and zeal and humility can complete their mission so it's like a tool the mark is not you know something to be uh, vanity or something like that it's not you know something you know that you can see or touch or you know be proud about it's just a tool so it says and can complete the mission and it says and humil humility yeah, humility can complete their mission um it says, you will then see that the mark is a divine grace that is superior to pain. And the pain is, he's talking about, you know what I'm saying? You throw rocks at these guys. You know what I'm saying? They, you may get them down. If you get one of them down, what was you? I'm, I'm serious. But, and, and, you know, but if we do get one of them down, you're going to find out that their mission is above that. You know what I'm saying? And, you know what I'm saying? You, you can hurt them. But, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Um it's kind of hard to explain you're not really gonna hurt them to get the desired effect like for instance if you know what i'm saying donald trump was to go crazy find him a 144 guy and you know start pressing on his thumbs or whatever you know putting him in a corkscrew or you know 
he 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 might as well go ahead and break him in half now because he's just gonna sit there and torture the guy because he's not gonna quit. He ain't gonna change his mind, and you, you can do whatever you want to do. He's superior to pain. He says that illuminates you in your great greatest trials. Okay. So, and it, it illuminates you in the greatest trials because you know that there's something higher. And so, and put it on, bring it on. You know what I'm saying? These trials are necessary. It's, it's now or later kind of thing with these trials, guys. If you, you can you can suffer now with love, you know, and, and, and get you gain some merits. Or you're going to drain your cup later on in the tribulation. And I promise you, you'd rather do it by yourself than with a whole bunch of people. It just make, makes more sense to me. Why, why would I want to be, I'd rather be screaming by myself. And, you know, got 50, 11 other folks screaming at the same time. You know, if they screaming louder than I am, I may not get hurt. So, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> that reveals profound knowledge. Okay, now, let's see. What, what reveals profound knowledge? You will then see that Mark is a divine grace that is superior to pain. It's a divine grace that reveals profound knowledge. Okay. Ain't gonna say nothing about that. Uh, see, these, these guys are gonna be real smart. You know what I mean? That's that's why, you know, I hope I meet one one day because, you know, I like smart people. I like not knowing stuff. And so when when you get the opportunity to be around these guys, you know, you all you want to do is whip out the tape recorder, the pencil and the piece of paper and just sit there, you know. That's what I that's what I could imagine. They got something that we need to hear and you know, I want to be the first one here. You know what I mean? I always sat in the front of the class in college, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there looking, you know, up at the, you know, teacher's nose hairs cuz you know, I'm right there with him, you know what I mean? I don't want to miss nothing. He says, um, and which in any place can open a breach for the passage of the spirit. Oh, he went over my head now. See, this is why we need these guys to help us understand this. He says, in any place can open a breach for the passage of the spirit. I have no idea what that means. That's above me. I'm going. The mark is a light. I'm sorry. The mark is like a link uniting whoever possesses it to the spiritual world um yeah well you got to understand what the spiritual world is it's that world within our conscience um the 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 144,000 being the first fruits are the first ones that have this link all the rest of us are going to get this this link is that, that they have it first so when we're looking at them as a difference between them and us we see yeah they possess it and we ain't got it it says uh, it is the channel by which the thoughts and words of the spiritual world manifest in your world okay um, it's talking about our conscious here you know it's talking about the thing within us somehow these hundred and forty four thousand people um, have this thing first like, like I say we're all planning on getting it he, he's going to turn it on for us at all times some of us you know could you know it could be turned on a little earlier you know I, I believe our mind is turned on I believe you know I know some other people who are you know involved in spirit to spirit communication which is you know I think clear evidence but you know I think the majority of people are still tied up in materialism and they will you know catch up a little later so you know, say it says know then by my words that the marked one is a messenger okay talking about the 144 the 9 one, four, 1 plus 4 plus 4 is 9 so we call him the 9 is a messenger the 9 is a messenger you know and so if he's a messenger what message is he carrying he's an envoy now remember that the envoys of old we call them prophets but we remember that nobody really liked what they had to say and these are the same way it's going to be with these modern day envoys or messengers. You know, the message that they're carrying is not one that's going to be a popular message. It's going to be rejected. But the problem is this time is do or die. You need you do it or you die. And that message is love and the law. You have to get in the ark. That's the message that they're carrying is love and law. And it's not a preachy message. It's not a stand up on a pulpit in a park kind of message. It's a, you know, example kind of message. Remember in the earlier verses, it's, you know, something expected to live. Not necessarily show or say. I mean, not necessarily say, but to show. He says, and my instrument. So talking about the one four four, they they are the instruments. He says, the committed and response, the commitment and responsibility of the marked one toward my work is great. Meaning, you know what I'm saying? You get in their way if you want to. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna run you over. You know what I'm saying? You try to stand between these guys and the word of God, you know what I'm saying? And you're going to lose. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter. Mama, daddy, sister, brother, you, 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 the commitment and responsibility is great. 
but he is not alone on his path. He only thinks he is. He only thinks he, and it feels very long. And I asked, hey, you know, you know, I'm I'm guessing. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I'm just reading what it say here. And I read the whole book, so you know I have some other um chapters and stuff that I can reference to that you may have not gotten to yet. But you know, once you get the essence of what the word says, you know, you realize that what I'm saying is just, you know, I'm not making it up, is what I'm saying. A long way to say, hey, I ain't just making this stuff up. You know, by his side there walks a guardian angel. See, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I just forget I, I read this stuff. He's not by himself. He has a guardian angel who I could edit all that out. I, um, the guardian angel who protects him, guides and inspires and strengthens him. Now, the funny thing about this guardian angel, guys, and I know I'm jumping to another section of the book here, but the guardian angel, he's he he's he's kind of burdened, if you know what I mean. It's, it's, when he explained this guardian angel, dude, it's like. Um, he is um, here to protect us, here to guide us, to here to you know make sure that you know everything is going in line. But at the same time, we are ignorant to um, what we're supposed to do in order to help him out. So you know he, we're making it hard for him. You know what I'm saying? We're like the person who don't really want to go down a path, so we like crying and sitting down. And he's got to come back and help us uh, and make us go. Because, you know, we're ignorant, you know, we're not really, you know, know what we're supposed to be doing. We don't even know he's there and he's helping us the whole time. And not only is he coming back and getting us in it, but then when, when when we call something bad to happen, we start fussing at him, you know what I'm saying? And, oh, like, why did why did the Lord let us happen and all of this? So, it's re we, we're really hard on these guardian angel guys, is, is what it's saying in this, in this other chapter. And I thought it was kind of funny. But it says um, that these guardian angels, they protect God, inspire and strengthen him. Talking about the nine, talking about the envoy here. It says, oh, how strong has he, has been he who knows how to embrace his cross with love. So we learned about this cross early. I, I've been in the, in, the, in the word for about 20 years and I never really understood the cross as much as I do now. Getting it from the third testament. The cross is, you know, when, when somebody is talking bad about you and you don't deserve it that's the cross when you know somebody you know thinks you did something wrong and they come and tell you oh you did something wrong and they you know they're they're upset you know and then you got to hear them you know um you know go on and how you did something wrong the whole time you know and you're completely innocent well if you decide to take it and embrace it and just you know what i'm saying say yes ma'am and go on you've just bore your cross but if you start fighting back, oh, I ain't doing that. Well, that's not bearing your cross. So he's saying, and, and, and so he's saying that you learn to bear your cross with love. So all of that you get from the churches and all that you get from people, you know, and they call you satanic, they call you all kinds of names. Well, if you do it with love, you know, saying that you embrace it with love is what he's talking about. Where, you know, you could embrace it with hate where you start, you know, throwing some rocks back at them kind of thing. Like I used to do. You know what I'm saying? I know I did. And how hard and bitter has it been? How hard and bitter has been the road to the chosen one who has not known how to carry with him the divine sign of the chosen in the third era? Meaning, <laughs> how hard is it for the nine, the 144 who ain't got no idea who he is and he don't know what he's doing? And you know why? Because he's still he's still punished. He's still going to get all the extra trials. He's still going to get all the extra tribulations of the nine. It's just that he don't know how to fend it off. He don't know what he's doing. He's making mistakes. You know what I'm saying? He don't know when the Sabbath day is. He don't know what foods not to eat. He don't know where the pitfalls are because he doesn't have his Bible in his hand and he's ignorant. He says, you know what I'm saying? How bitter. You know what that thing? He's doing some crime. I'm going to tell you now. He's doing some crime. You know what I'm saying? It's bitter for the rest of us now. Here you got this dude that get, that's supposed to be our guide and he ain't, you know what I'm saying, doing what he's supposed to be doing. So. If the rest of us getting punished, how hard is he getting punished? 49 says, I tell all you who hear me, learn to pray and keep vigil. Okay, learn to pray. We learned in another chapter, I think it's 17, that prayer is powerful. It's probably the most powerful thing you can do. And keep vigil to carry your cross with love and practice righteousness and obedience so that this life. Okay, that's a lot to say there. He says, carry your cross with love. We just talked about that practice righteousness now this practicing of the righteousness is misunderstood in our churches because you know what is righteousness is it being obedient to the pastor so that they don't take the holy spirit from you you know what i'm saying when you when you get out of line or is it following what the bible says you know what i'm saying it says an obedience 
uh, and that's that's going along with that. You can't be righteous if you're not obedient. I think they go hand in hand. He says, so that this life, which has been the most luminous reincarnation of your spirit, this life, he's, he, in another chapter, he, in another chapter, he talks about how we've had past lives here. He's saying in this lifetime, which is judgment day, you know, it lasts for a thousand years. And this one, the one we live in now is the most luminous, meaning our lights are being turned on and we can actually see into the spirit world a little bit. Yeah. We may not be able to live in there, but we can at least peep through the window kind of thing. And it's never been possible before. He says, um, uh, the most luminous reincarnation of your spirit, I meaning it's the best time that just for your spirit ever. He says, it is, but it's the worst time for your body. He says, it is not sterile, uh, making you lament the time lost and the gifts unused. Okay, so I lost in there right there at the end. Um, Y'all fill in the blanks for me, guys. Uh, fill it in. You know what I missed. I'm going to go on to 50. Meditate all of you marked or unmarked now he's talking about all of israel again now he started off talking about the, the um uh, historic jews and then he talked about all of israel and then he started talking about the 144 israel or the spirit israel now the 144 israel now he's saying everybody you know whether you have the mark or whether you don't have the mark he says meditate on this lesson for all of you have a destiny see that's what we were saying earlier they don't really go into it too in too detail in this chapter but all of us have a destiny to fulfill within my work meaning we all have a job to do so don't go running around trying to you know be these marked people he, he tell you gonna put some on you i'm gonna tell you he gonna put some on you jump over there if you want to he'll let you be over there if you seriously got it but you're gonna be like the walk on you're gonna be like the walk on player on the nfl football team you better be ready that's all i'm saying you better be ready 51 says the tribe of the israel the tribes of israel of the spirit are very numerous the tribes of israel of the spirit are very numerous meaning they're not these 12 tribes you know the 12 tribes would have all had 12 different you know talents and and you know had 12 different looks but these grafted in ones are going to look all different kinds of ways and they're going to have all different kinds of talent so the different tribes are numerous now from each i will select 12,000. Uh oh so here come them people who who trying to bump the number way up higher? I just gave them some 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 real proof here, <laughs> but I'm gonna go on. He says, "We'll select twelve thousand and shall mark them on their foreheads." Okay, so it says on their foreheads, but the people of Israel are not limited to one hundred forty-four thousand. Now this is the confusion. There's a lot of people saying that they're limited. No, they're not. These are just the first fruits, the first guys, the gods, the one. See. These guys are ready now. The rest of us aren't ready. We're living in this luxurious life with all of this. You, you hear all these birds and stuff chirping in the background. You know what I'm saying? Green grass is all cut and manicured and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I got electricity coming. You got, we're living in a different kind of lifestyle now and we're enjoying it. These 144,000 that the Lord set aside, they're already ready to jump. They're already ready to pop. They they ain't out here, you know what I'm saying, you know, shining on their phones and, you know what I'm saying, well, you know, walking around with their Gucci bags. They already are soldiers. They're already in the trenches and they're already ready to explode on the scene. It's just not time yet. He says, <clears throat> um, but the chosen are not limited to the 144,000. The chosen people is infinite. Okay. The master taught you in the second era that many are called, but few are chosen right so many are called it wasn't just 144,000 that was called a whole lot of people were called and you will still feel this calling on your life the calling would have never went away it's not a temporary thing you know if you heard the call you know I heard the call back in the 90s and a few other people I talked to have you know heard the call along the same time but they didn't answer the call they chose other paths you know and but they still have the call when you talk to them they they still feel they still feel it there it's just unused you know or you know um mm -mm. it says few are chosen and all of israel shall be called okay so everybody's got the calling right or is, is he speaking in in future tense all israel shall be called but from among them i shall mark out 144,000. Okay, so everybody shall be called, but the mark is on, on, on the nine first. He says, in all I shall place peace. So everybody's got peace. Uh, everybody's got spirituality. 
and everybody has the principles of spirit to spirit communication. Now, principles of spirit to spirit communication, you learn that in a prayer section. What he's talking about is what you're doing when you do silent prayer. You know, not really an outward prayer or open, open prayer or when you're praying to a, a figurine or a picture or when you like go to the altar at church. That was that's kind of a material or spirit or um, that's a um, spirit to material, material to spirit or material to material. I'm not sure. But spirit to spirit doesn't involve all of that. There's no material. There's no way to really see it. Other, there's no way really to see it other than the evidence. Okay, and 53 says, I am the universal father. Okay, and we understand how the word father resonates in the spirit world. We learned that in the prayer section. How using when we when we say the word father, it actually opens up the communication on the higher dimensions in the spirit world so that our voice is actually heard there. Whereas, you know, it doesn't say it, but it kind of implies it that if you say stuff like God or Lord or even Jesus, you don't have the same effect as saying the word father father okay it says my love descends to all hearts i have come to all peoples in the earth okay remember we all his people some of us are disobedient some of us are off track some of us are atheists and blasphemous but we are all his people yet is i if i have chosen this mexican nation oh everybody should have slammed on the brakes there because i did he said well where does this thing come from anyway yeah mexico 1918 something it's weird, you know, um, where this document comes from. But that's a whole nother. That's, uh, he covers that in chapter one. I mean, he does. You go back to chapter one of this book and you can, you know, hear about this, this thing. And so we're going to go on. He says, if I have chosen this Mexican nation as the place for the full outpouring of my word and my revelations, meaning this whole thing, this whole book was given to them, you know, like John on Patmos, you know what I'm saying? This thing was delivered to them and they wrote it down. And, you know, I'm sure it's gone through some translations. This one here, you know, they use some words here that I know are some translation errors like Jews and Jewish and, you know what I'm saying? They, some, you know, words that, you know, I'm sure our father would not have used you know because they that's definitely confusing words and you can see this is a well put together document why was he choose such poorly poor words like jew or jewish <clears throat> to describe his people in the same paragraph or sometimes even seem, seem like in the same verse but moving on it is because i found it to be humble okay so he's talking about the mexican people now it talks about them like i said in chapter one and these people are, like he said, humble. I have found the virtues in their homes and have made the spirits of the people of Israel reincarnate among them. Okay, so he found them humble. He found some remote, you know, I don't know how remote, but he found some place in Mexico and he reincarnated his spirit into this humble people, meaning he reincarnated his spirit into them. Maybe, you know, it was definitely a larger spirit. We find that on another chapter, but he says people. So it could have been more than just one. It was the uh, the Elijah spirit was there and he is the one who, who was, you know, greatly responsible for for these teachings here. It says 54 says yet not all belong to this nationality nor are all in the flesh flesh so he's saying hey don't get tricked up again thinking that the mexicans is like the hebrews no you know what i'm saying we'll be trying to make you understand in this whole chapter that you know it ain't about physicality it's not about what you can see it's not about you know the material flesh the spirits belonging to the number of the chosen are disseminated throughout the world meaning they are chinese they are japanese they are haitian they are uh, Indonesian, they are Jewish, they are Russian, they are Hebrews, they are, you know, Babylonians, they are everybody, they are everybody, la di da everybody, anybody who's calling on the, the name of the Lord, anybody who's calling on the name of the Lord is his people. You got to understand, we're in different positions, some of us are more obedient, some of us are more knowledgeable, we are still his people, and we are disseminated throughout the world. They have been marked, okay? Marked again, talk about the 144, even so, you know, they're everybody. You know, we, we're learning that here, that it's not just the Levi's, you know, it's not just the Levi's, you know, you know, it's gonna be everybody, you know? If you look at the movie, The Book of Eli, I think that that's what they was trying to tell you there with the with, with the little with the little lady there, is that, you know what I'm saying? If that, 
that very well could be hers. She's going to pop up like a blonde haired, blue eyed, white chick. You know what I'm saying? Talking, you know what I'm saying? And she ain't going to be talking about she the 144. She's going to be showing you the 144 and she gonna, ain't going to be no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Posse up. Let's follow. If, if she the one, I'm right there with her. I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to tell you now. I'm, I'm a supporter. He said, they have been marked. I have opened their eyes, have sensitized their hearts. And from spirit to spirit, they communicate with me. From spirit to spirit, they communicate with him. That's why you don't see him in a bunch of churches. You don't see him doing a whole bunch of, you know, stuff that we come to recognize as religion or, you know, uh, tradition or whatever. These guys are on a different level. They, they, they don't stand out. You know what I'm saying? His 55 says, one part of the 144 marked by me live among humanity. Okay, though they're actually walking around. There's a lot of people say they own clouds. No, they're they're out here. It says that you know they are part. They're your coaches on your baseball team. They are your, you know, what I'm saying your. They 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 at your church. They at your church picnics. They at your family reunions. You know, you see these guys. He's saying they live among humanity. Among humanity mean they one of us. It says those servants of mine are found disseminated in the world again. Complying with the mission and praying for peace and working for the brotherhood of men. So this is how you know if who's one or not. You know what I'm saying? If if you know what I'm saying, this hasn't been your primary focus. You aren't one in one of four four. And said they have been doing this even though they don't know who they are. This is still their mission. So they're not like the rest of us. They get caught up in the world and then somebody comes and say, Hey, you might be one four four. And we say. Hey, you might be right. And then, you know what I'm saying? We get all excited. No, these guys, they always been doing this stuff. They always, they always been carrying this mission. You know what I'm saying? Like I said in the other video, they working beside you. It's just the one, they the ones down there at the lunchroom, you know, doing the Bible study or whatever. You know what I'm saying? When the plant go down, they the ones that start praying. While the rest of y'all, you know what I'm saying, run around, you know, grabbing your, your whatevers. You know what I'm saying? This dude, you know what I'm saying? He didn't close his eyes. Like, he sleep over there. He ain't sleep. You know what I'm saying? He's saving y'all. I mean... <laughs> For peace and working for the brotherhood of men. They do not know each other. Mm -hmm. No way to know. But some intuitive don't even know themselves. How are they going to know each other if they don't know who they are? But some intuitively and others because of this revelation, meaning some get it, you know, by divine spark. You know, you, you jump on YouTube, put in one for four. You got a bunch of people. It's obvious that they haven't read any scripture. But, you know, what I'm saying they 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 are, you know, explaining stuff that how could you know if you hadn't been, you know, Third Testament. I mean, I'm, I've gone in and heard some of these guys talk about stuff that I said, man, you crazy. And then I'd have made it through the Third Testament. I'm going back talking about, I apologize, man. I'm sorry. But, you know, that's exactly what, you know, the word says. And, you know, accept my gratitude. I'm going to subscribe to your page now and wait for your next video. You know what I'm saying? Because <clears throat> they're getting it intuitively, intuitively from the inside. While the rest of us, you know, like me, I'm trying to find a book somewhere. They're getting it from the inside. He says, and others, because of this revelation, like I just said, and getting it from this scripture here, they're reading this thing going, you know, I fit the description. Or fulfilling their destiny of throwing light onto the path of their brothers. See, that's the destiny. That's the job, to throw light onto the path of their brothers. Um, you know, and so you say, oh, I want to build 144,000. Well, you ready for everybody to follow you? Are you really ready for everybody to do what you're doing? I mean, you, you, you want me to, you know, you know, change my life to, to do what you're doing. That's basically what you're saying. That's what the front 144, they're not coming to talk to us and preach to us and then go home and enjoy it. No, they're coming to live it out for us and for us to look at their example and do what they're doing and, and survive this thing. They're different. He says, of those marked by my love, some are simple men. Meaning they're humble, but others are men notable in the world. Meaning they're just big time scientists, big time politicians, big time, you know, athletes or, you know what I'm saying, world leaders or who, whoever. He said they can only be distinguished by the spirituality and of their lives and works. So, and how are you going to see that? So you're not going to be able to tell it. They're working right beside you and there's no way for you to know because you can't see their spirituality unless you look, you know, really deep into their lives. And, you know, you're really not going to do that. And even when you do, it's not going to look familiar to you because it's not what you think you're supposed to be doing in the first place. So it's going to, you know, just look odd. That's why you, people say, oh, the richest person, he's the richest man in the world. He's riding around in a, you know, 1984 Honda. 
you know what I'm saying, with some old busted shoes on, you talk about it just looks odd. He, you know, it just looks strange to you, you know, the the the, the spiritualist lifestyle compared to <clears throat> the material lifestyle where no he's got to have the latest you know car and got to have the latest you know some good you know shoes on can't have the old and busted and by the manner of their thinking about and of understanding divine revelations okay so this is how you gonna know these guys is when they read the scripture and you know what i'm saying it makes sense you know what i'm saying it, it ain't kind of you know where we get got to talk for an hour on you know a verse like i'm doing here no when these guys start unlocking the scripture you're gonna know it you're gonna hear it and you're gonna be like oh i hear something there it says uh they are not idolaters now we don't understand what idolatry is guys i'll tell you i'm just now learning within the last few days what idolatry is and the first thing that i learned is that it is completely run amok we're like fish in a tank and you're talking about how's the water it's all around us. We're like, what water? You know, we don't know what idolatry is. That's like, the, that's like, we're, we're completely swimming in it. You know what I'm saying? And so we don't know what it is. But these guys, they ain't like us. You know what I'm saying? They're saying that they're different. They, they ain't sitting in front of the television watching it. You know what I'm saying? They're not, you know what I'm saying? Taking pictures, you know, and, and you know, we want to show you our grandbabies. You know what I'm saying? That's not important to them. You know what I'm saying? They they might not know to abstain from such, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a level of maturity that they have to get to. But you gotta understand that, you know, it's is is different for these guys. They don't really they don't really, you know, get off on that thing kinda, if you know what I mean. Um, they're not fanatics. Now the scripture this defines fanatics as um um like um a church or a religion that thinks that they're only they're the only religion that's going to survive if you're not part of our church if you're not a baptist or if you're not a holiness or if you're not you know what i'm saying part of our group then you are um wrong and you know that's a fanatic like and we're fanatical about the holiness faith or whatever he says they're not fanatics meaning you know they you know you may find them anywhere you may find them in any church they may be down there with the jehovah witnesses one on thursday and then on wednesday they're down there with the pentecostals and then you know what i'm saying on sunday they're over there with the baptists you know what i'm saying you don't you know they're not fanatical you know they're not you know like that not just change my microphone guys we gonna roll with it like that. Nor frivolous. All right, so frivolous. I'm gonna have to look this word up. Hopefully, I got one of them little blue things flashing up. To tell you what frivolous mean. No, but you know, think about it. You know, like, oh, what frivolous mean? Cause I can't remember what it is. They seem to practice no religion. Okay, now we talked about that earlier about the fanatical. These people are not. They seem to practice no religion because you know they ain't really doing. I don't know. It says, nonetheless, from them arise an inner worship of their spirit with that of their Lord. Okay? The inner worship of spirit of that of their Lord. Okay? Mm -hmm. right, let's go on. Those marked by the light of the Holy Spirit are like lifeboats. Understand, like lifeboats. One gentleman on there, he had a, a, a dream, and he was telling about how he jumped. He he a, a big flood came, and he jumped in the boat. Well, these boats are going to be um, the the one forty four, the nine. Who, like I said earlier, they're standing ready for us. You know, they already you know, or they will already know the law. Remember the other class we get, they have to reunite around the law before this thing sets off. So by then they they'll be you know they'll be reunited around the law. So they're going to know the law, and then they're going to be ready to go. And when we see one of them, and you know we'll we'll you know it says we'll be like lifeboats, and we'll hopefully we'll grab onto them and we'll survive. I know we'll survive, but I said that hopefully we'll grab onto them. You know what I mean? Won't we'll reject them and be like, oh, where your lectures at, man? They are guardians, counselors, and strongholds. I have okay um guardians counselors and strongholds i have equipped them with light in their spirits okay the divine light like i said that spark that we're all waiting for and with peace okay these are peaceful people unlike in the fight you know what i'm saying always you know what i'm saying looking for somebody to pluck in a eyeball you know these are our peaceful people they are you know have strength 
uh, with the healing balm. They can heal people. You remember how healing is going to be used in these last times. It's going to be, you know, some serious stuff. And these guys are going to um, be able to heal us. He says that with keys that invisibly open the most stubborn of doors. Talking about our hearts. You know, those people that, you know, seem to be really hard. We can't reach or whatever. These guys are going to be able to get to them. And weapons that overcome obstacles insuperable to others. Okay, you need one of them, them blue bubbles. Ah. Thought bubble. It is not necessary that they show titles awarded by the world. Okay, remember, like like the, like the Messiah says, uh, yeah, I ain't got to speak for me. For their gifts to be recognized, they do not know science. Okay. Unlike me, you know, I'm, I have a master's degree in science. These guys, you know, they 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 ain't gotta be, they ain't gotta have no doctors. You learn in the scripture, you know, they ain't gotta, you know, go to school. We learn in the scriptures that, you know, um, the spirit, the spirit communication is where they learn from. You know, what I'm saying, so they ain't gotta have a piece of paper. Um, it says, but they do not know science, but they are doctors, meaning they can heal. You go down to that doctor talking about your cancer if you want to, all he's going to do is give you a pill, you know, to keep you living long enough for him to extract as much money as he could possibly get out of you before he finally lets you drop off to, you know what I'm saying, to the grave or whatever. But you find one of these 144 guys and let them pray for you and you're going to see some serious healing. Not that, you know, well, it is that they're special, but you remember that the healing power is put there as a tool, as a tool that the Lord gave for the incredulous, the incredulous those that are hard to convince he says uh, they do not know law meaning they ain't never been to law school but they're counselors they can tell you what's up they are poor in the goods of the earth meaning they ain't got a whole lot of money to offer you you know or you know wealth you know they might not have you know 12 acres you know to live on like I do but you know what I'm saying they and yet may do much good in their own way and, you know you know, they, they, they are still doing a lot of good. They may not have money, but they're still doing good because, you know, they are special. Among these multitudes who have come to receive my word are many who have come only to confirm their mission. For it is not on the earth that they have been given gifts or been entrusted with a charge. See, I can't make myself 144. You can't make yourself 144. So by, by knowing the word, all I could do is confirm their mission. Um, you know, because they didn't get their gifts from down here. They didn't pick up no Bible and find his gifts. It was entrusted uh, a long time ago. It says, I tell you truly that the light that each spirit possesses is that which has, er has earned on the long road of evolution. All right. What he's talking about here is the evolution of our spirit. Now, humans don't evolve like animals do. We ain't never had tails, you know, and the Lord created Adam and we've been Adam ever since, but our spirit has been in the evolution. It evolved from where Adam was at and then we were getting given the law and then it made another evolution where we were given love with Christ and now it's making another evolution as we are jumping to the spirit world that we are waiting for, that rapture that we're waiting for. All right, 59 says, humanity will believe my work will be spread throughout the globe. I shall begin with the 144,000 mark out. So, like I said, every eye gonna see. You know what I'm saying? I think I see, but you know what I'm saying? Because of these 144, it, you know what I'm saying? He gonna start with them first. But then we all gonna be we all gonna be marked out, right? He's just gonna start with them, and that's one thing to 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 import so we don't get tricked up. He's talking about doing some blood or intent or some crazy crap. You know what I'm saying? No more. I want to be in that number. You know, um, you need to pick your Bible up. You know what I'm saying? Close your YouTube a little for a little while, and and you know what I'm saying? Get in some scripture before you be doing something crazy. He said we all gonna be marked. These guys are just first. Who shall struggle with the obedience? See, they're struggling with obedience, struggling with love. And a zeal in the time of wars and beliefs and doctrines. See, I can relate. You know, because the same path that these guys take, we're all going to take it. You know what I'm saying? So I may not be 144, but you know what I'm saying? I know what it means to struggle with obedience. You know how hard... Let me, let me put my hands over my mouth because it's obedience. You know what I'm saying? It's like saying... You know, say you know how hard it is to do what my mama say. No, it ain't hard because you know you can get this butt whooping anytime you feel like it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't hard. I can, I can make it real easy for you to do what I tell you to do. You know what I'm saying? And go like Wooty Tang on you in a quick minute. 
You know what I'm saying? But so, but they what we do struggle with on media. So if, if my me a mere, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, 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 a multitude of folk is struggling with obedience. I can imagine what they struggling with. I'm struggling with love. You know what I'm saying? It's hard for me to whip out my little little bit of you know whatever to help somebody when I you know I barely got some. That's love, and and I'm struggling with that. So I know they struggling. The zeal in a time of war of beliefs and doctrines. I'm struck. This is the war of, of of beliefs and doctrines right now. It's going on now in the churches. It's people you know do all this sausage making about what religion is right and who he's supposed to believe and all of that. You know they're struggling. I'm struggling in the zeal right now. You know what I'm saying? And I know they're struggling even more. And who in the midst of the battle shall be a link that proposes to the world. Okay, so in the midst of the battle, they're going to be a link that proposes to us. So they're going to be, okay, what are they going to propose? Not the chains of slavery. Okay, so we're in the chains of slavery now, a bunch of kinds of slavery. But that of spiritual alliance that will be one of freedom and brotherhood. So they're going to change us. They're going to help us to change to this spiritual being. Like we say, they're going to they be the guys that gets us over from slavery where we're at now. We're slave to this world, slave to our belly, slave to Walmart, slave to our bank account, slave to our houses and our cars and everything else. They're going to help us gain a spiritual alliance that will be one of freedom and brotherhood. Those soldiers shall not be alone. Uh-oh. My spiritual world <clears throat> shall follow and protect them. The spiritual world. My spiritual world. They got in a whole bunch of capital letters there. I don't know what that means. Let's put it in comments. What do you mean the spiritual world? Shall follow and protect them. They shall perform marvels as they go. Hey, folk talking about flying and all kinds of stuff. Hey, I'm with it, man. And in this way, giving testimony to my truth. So it's all going to be to show, show his truth. All right, man about to act the nut, you know what I'm saying, show his power. How about, you know, the Lord going to show some power too. And, you know, not in the form of bombs and bullets, but in the form of, of these 144,000 that's going to come and show us the way in, help us survive these things, you know, help us, you know, go on and repopulate the earth. So that's it, y'all, for chapter 39. I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, it is just a show. You need, really need to read the scripture, guys get the truth get the whole truth and nothing but the truth Hermes Academy power patience continence and faith we teach virtues